Hi, this is Helena Hart, and I'm here with Valerie Green again today. Valerie is a love and relationship coach who helps women inspire the love, intimacy, and commitment that they want from their man. So welcome, Valerie. Thank you so much for talking with me again today. Hi, Helena. I always love speaking to you. We have such enriching and valuable conversations. Yes, we do. Valerie and I have actually done three other videos together. If you haven't seen those, I'll include links to them in the description. Uh, they got such a huge response, and every time I publish a video with Valerie, everyone asks to bring her back on again soon. So I'm really excited. Today we're actually going to be talking about how to inspire a man to want to commit in a relationship. We just got so many questions asking for a video on that topic. So Valerie, let's just jump right in today. What are some of like the most common mistakes or problems that women run into that you found in your coaching practice when it comes to getting that commitment that they want in their relationship? Yeah, thank you so much, Helena. I think the biggest mistake that I see across the board is women committing to a particular man instead of committing to the vision of the type of relationship that she wants to create and inviting a man into that from the beginning. And so of course, you know, you're not going to show up on a first date and be like, here's my vision for the relationship I want to create. Um, but you need to be really clear, um, preferably before you start dating, but at least before you become exclusive with a man about what is your inspiring vision that you're more committed to creating in in life than you are to this particular man that you're sitting in front of. And so what I mean is, um, what does love mean to you? What does it really mean to open your heart to a man? And what are you, uh, what are your emotional gifts that you're willing to give? And then what do you need to receive from a man in order to feel safe for your heart to open, you know? And, um, do you want marriage and family? Do you want a certain type of lifestyle? Do you want to be treated a certain way? Um, it's really important for you to be able to speak about your vision in a few sentences in an inspiring way so that when you go on date three and four and he starts asking you, you know, tell me about the relationship you want, you know how to describe it like, I want to fall more deeply in love with the man that I'm with every single day for the rest of my life. And I really want to have children that we can inspire together to be great in the world. And we really know how to devote ourselves to, to them uh, being, you know, wonderful people in the world, but that, that doesn't take away from us having a magnificent marriage, you know? And so it's like, you need to know what vision you're inspired to create. And that needs to be the commitment that you have. So that if a man shows up and you have chemistry with him and you, you know, quote unquote, fall in love with him and he winds up not wanting the same thing, you don't become monogamous with that man just because you want to have sex with him. And I think that's the main mistake that I see a lot of women making because um, it's understandable that most women don't want to have sex with a man if they're not exclusive. You know, for, for many reasons, we get too emotionally attached and vulnerable. Um, there's, you know, of course, STDs and health concerns. And so I see a lot of women have great chemistry with a man and then he asks her to be exclusive and they don't speak about the kind of relationship that they both want. They just stop seeing other people because they're having sex. And um, it's important to understand that a large percentage of men are willing to be monogamous with a woman for years and have no intention of marriage and family. They just, you know, want a girlfriend that they have a great time with and, and they support her in many ways and they love her in many ways, but they might not have the same vision for marriage and family that she does. And so I think the main mistake I see a lot of women making is that they'll agree to a monogamy, to exclusivity without any kind of clarification of where that's going. Oh my gosh, I see that happen over and over. I know men like that and couples like that too who have been together for 10, 
15 years and the woman is so invested and just assuming that, you know, it's leading towards some, some kind of deeper commitment or marriage. And the man has absolutely no plans for that at all. And is just happy to have a girlfriend that he sees three, four times a week. I've just seen that happen over and over. Something I see a lot too is, you know, it goes along with what you're saying. The woman gets really wrapped up in the chemistry she feels, or she falls in love with the man and she puts her desire to be with this one particular man kind of ahead of what she really wants for herself. Like she mm -hmm. might really want to settle down and have, you know, get married and have a family. And she doesn't know whether or not that's what he wants, but she just wants to be with him so bad. She'll kind of do whatever it takes or go along with whatever, kind of shrink her desires down to fit in with what he's ready for right now. And that's where they can get into trouble. A couple of years down the line, she's like, well, wait a minute. You know, actually, I really want to get married. And he's not quite there. Is that something you see a lot as well? Exactly. And by that time, she's emotionally invested. She's in love with him. Maybe they even moved in together. And it takes a huge amount of heartbreak to, you know, disengage from the relationship at that point, because you're, you're in love with this guy and you're, you're committed. And so I always tell women never be more committed than the guy is, you know, never be more invested than the guy is always wait. If you want to be the feminine partner, it's important to let him keep moving the relationship forward and let him invest first and let him um, show you by how he's treating you, by how often he wants to see you, by how he expresses his feelings for you, how committed he is, and then you invest as much as he is, but not more. It's such a good rule of thumb. Yes, I feel like that needs to be on like a, a quote at, all over social media with your name on it. <laughs> you know, not <laughs> in a man who hasn't invested in you, right? Or not investing more in a man because a man really needs to feel that he's invested in you in order to want to commit. I've really found, I have a program called The Art of Getting the Commitment You Want and I talk about it like a relationship roadmap and I say, mm -hmm. you want to be one step behind the man on this relationship roadmap, not way ahead of him trying to pull him along. If you're trying to like get a man to commit, you've already kind of lost the game in a lot of ways I've found, right? It's like the dynamic needs to be completely reversed, if that makes sense. Do you, do you totally, agree? totally, yeah. And um, so there's, and I think uh, another mistake that I see women making is when they do want to talk to the man about where he's at in terms of the relationship, where's this relationship going? A lot of times they talk about it in a, a way that occurs to the man as being pushy. And so then he avoids the conversation. You know, after a few months, he might say, where is this relationship going? And then he might be like, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm still getting to know you. And like, you know, he sort of avoids the topic. And so she doesn't want to get rejected. And so she stops talking about it. And, you know, it, it, it just doesn't feel good to either person. And so that's why it's really important, like I said, to not only be committed to your vision of love, uh, but to really know how to speak about your vision of love in an inspiring way. So that when he starts then asking you about what it is that you want to create with your life, you know, which is a conversation that you should be having after you've been on a few dates. Like, so, I mean, not on the first date, on the first date, you don't want to ask like, you know, what do you want in a relationship or, you know, what do you want in your life? But on a first date, you can ask deeper questions to get to know what he's already committed to. Because another distinction of commitment is that men who commit to women are also committed. They're the type of men that commit in their lives. You know, so you're not going to just show up on the first date and say, what are you committed to? <laughs> but you can say, like, so, like, what do you enjoy about your work, for example? You know, because, like, he'll speak about what he's committed to in his work. It doesn't have to be uh, about his work though. You can ask him things like, what is he most proud of? Um, or, you know, what is he like when he's at his best? Um, those are kind of questions that get a man to speak about what he's committed to in life so that you get a sense of the type of character that he has because the type of man that's gonna commit to a woman and not just marry her, because there's a lot of men that'll marry a woman but not be fully committed, right, to, to giving her what she really wants in life, to supporting her in 
in really being who she wants to be in life. And that's the kind of man you want to be with. So you want to start asking questions in a curious way, not like in an interrogating way. Because men hate to be interrogated on a first date. You know, you, you show up and you're like, so... Like, where do you see your life in five years, right? And like, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. It's he just knows that you're like, yeah. there's, I feel it. It's <laughs> between like sizing him up before you even know him versus like getting to know who he is. So I would love for you to take us through like, I love that you started with the first date, you know, asking questions to see if he's the type of man who, who wants to commit to things in his life. Um, all the way through maybe when the man asks, to be exclusive, what a woman can say to make sure they're on the same page. I'd love if you could just kind of take us through the, the course of a whole relationship. That would be cool. Yeah, <laughs> sure. In like a half hour, right? No, but, right. Um, <laughs> um, but no, I really do uh, teach my clients uh, a certain formula to follow because, uh, and obviously it's not a game. You're not playing games. Um, it's really about just being really clear about what it is that you want and so, so I'll take a step back. And so first of all, before you even have the conversation with the guy, it's important to be clear yourself about a few different things. I mentioned some of them, you know, like, like what is the relationship vision that is inspiring to you that you're committed to creating, but also what are, cause a, a successful relationship is also helping you become who you want to be in the world. And, you know, so it is also about your purpose. Like you want a man who's going to empower you to live the kind of life that you want to live. Like what contribution do you want to make in the world? And what qualities does a man have to have to support you in that? And also like, it's important to look at your important emotional needs, like the needs that we didn't get met as children. For example, my parents weren't able to give me as deep a level of empathy as I needed. Uh, meaning like when I, when I shared my feelings, like they were, um, they weren't dismissive. They were like, it's okay to have a feeling. But like, I, I knew I needed a guy that would ask me deeper questions that would open me up so that I could get clarity about who I was. And that was one of the most important qualities in a man that he had this kind of empathic curiosity that really allowed me to get cre uh, clear about who I am as a human being. And so it's important that you have this list of what qualities a man has to have to meet your emotional needs, not just like superficial qualities, like how he needs to look or how much money he needs to make, because um, that's what's going to keep you happy in the long term. So you don't just want to find a man that wants to commit to you. You want to find a man who's going to support you in being who you most deeply long to be in the world. And so what qualities does he have to have? to uphold that and then also what uh, a related question is about your values um it's important like i think uh, john gottman did a study that the majority of couples that get divorced the reason they cite for divorce is that they don't have a shared vision for the future mm -hmm. um, and it's not necessarily infidelity or like you know anything else that you would think it would be um, but what creates a shared vision for the future is that you have shared values. So values are things like service to others, or it could be family, um, or it could be freedom, or it could be security, or it could be creativity. But it's important to clarify, like, you know, to ask yourself a question like, um, on your 80th birthday, what do you want your friends and family to be toasting you for? Um, because when you ask yourself that question, that's what allows you to see what it is that you're most deeply committed to. Because if you want a guy, I know that um, in the interview that I did with you for my podcast, which we'll, we can talk about a little bit uh, later, you talked about um, the, like your masculine energy you know, we all have masculine and feminine energy, but like your masculine energy needs to be strong in your own life in order to not like bring your masculine energy into the relationship and be pushy. Exactly. You know, like if you're like committed to creating what it is that you want to create in your life, which has to do with your values, then you're also going to attract a man that's committed to what he wants to create in his life, right? Because Absolutely. like attracts life. 
Yeah, I always say you attract a mirror image of your own masculine energy. So something I found a lot, you know, 10, 15 years ago, men who didn't want to commit, right? And that came from a, a you know, a belief that men don't want to commit, just this belief that I had that you had to sort of manipulate the way a man saw you or kind of like trick him into committing, just completely not true. But those are some of the deeper beliefs I had that, you know, I thought maybe no man would want to commit to me personally. And also I wasn't committing to myself in other areas right. of my life. I always tell women if you're attracting men or if your man is keeping you waiting or he's not committing, where are you waiting in other areas of your life? Where are you not committing to yourself and your own dreams and desires? And when you get your masculine energy and gear for yourself that way, that's often when the man tends to really step up or a new man steps in who's completely ready to commit. It's pretty interesting how it works. Right, exactly. Um, I mean, because you don't have to believe that life is mirroring how you show up, but I do find that to be true in a lot mm -hmm. of cases. And so th these are questions, and I'll just repeat those again. It's like, what is your vision for love? Um, you know, what are your top emotional needs that you're committed to having a guy meet and what qualities does he have to have in order to meet them? And then also, who do you most want to be in the world? What are your top values? And are you fully committed to creating those things in the world? And who would a guy have to be in order to support you in that? Um, and those are questions that are important to ask yourself ideally before you start dating. But if you're already in a relationship with a guy and you're already monogamous with him and you're not asking yourself those questions, it's important to get really clear about those questions because then how you show up as committed to yourself and your vision and you start engaging him from that space of sharing like, hey, I decided I'm committed to, you know, working out every day. I'm committed, you know, because I want to be like vibrant and healthier. I'm committed to getting to this place in my career. Um, all of a sudden you start inspiring him and inspi inspiring a man with who you're being is one of the key qualities that we need to have in order for him to see us as indispensable because he wants to be inspired. You know, so know even that. if you're with a man, it's like that needs to come first is the shift in your own commitment to yourself and what you want to create. And then, so from that place, um, then you can engage a man in different stages of dating, um, you know, in a commitment way. And actually, like, um, my favorite question to ask from uh, on a first date comes from another relationship coach called Lauren Francis. Um, and she calls it the heartache prevention question because you can't really, um, cause you want to see like a man will open up, um, about almost anything on a first date because uh, you're, he's not invested in you yet. And so it's really important to take what he says at face value. And so if you ask him something like, so do you believe in true love? Mm-hmm. Or do you believe that after marriage, a couple can keep falling more deeply and deeply in love with each other every day for the rest of their lives? You know, whatever it is that you want to create, like you don't have to ask him if he wants that because that'll be, that's a, a pushy interrogating question. Like, do you want marriage, you know, on a first date? <laughs> but you can ask him about his beliefs about love. Wow. Yes. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I love that you said that. Yeah. Because I found men will, they, you're right. They will tell you, they will show you who they are right off the bat. But sometimes we miss those, those red flags or we miss those clues because we are so wrapped up in how we feel about him. Those men that I, I was mentioning, you know, that I know who are in these kind of casual relationships for years and years and years are very vocal about the fact that they don't believe that, you know, we as humans are meant to be monogamous or they don't believe that you can be happy with one person for the rest of their life. They're very open about that. But, you know, the women that they date sometimes don't want to hear that <laughs> because they're just hoping that they're going to be that one person that changes their mind or changes the way they see the world. Um, which is just like, yeah, recipe for heartache, just like you said. Oh my gosh, this is really great information. And I can see how it kind of building the foundation this way takes your focus off of the man and like, how do I get this man to commit to me? Which never works, right? It's like reversing the whole dynamic. I love that. So what would you say, now let's say, you know, they've been dating for a few weeks or maybe a couple months, they might be sleeping together and the man asks the woman, 
to be exclusive. Maybe he asks her to take her profile down or asks if she's dating other men. How would you have a woman like talk about things at that stage? Yeah, it, it's an awesome question. There's so many distinctions uh, between the first date and when you decide to be exclusive with a man. Um, and so I'll try to cover all of them because so what you really want to be doing is asking these deeper questions throughout, but not in an interrogating way, you know, asking questions about what he is committed to in his life. Cause like a really important thing to discover about a man in the first few months before you become exclusive is like, what is his purpose in life? Um, all men are not all men, but all masculine men are more committed to their purpose than they are to a relationship. Not all men, but so like, true. Oh my gosh. I just have to do it. <laughs> that is so true. And I've never heard anyone say it just like that before, but yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. And it's like, that's the way to start inspiring a man that you're indispensable to him is, um, getting curious. And he, you know, so, Sometimes you can just come out. It depends on how self-aware the guy is. Sometimes you can just come out and ask, what's his purpose? Like, I actually asked my partner that on our second date. And, like, he turned to me and he was like, no woman's ever asked me that before. But then he thought about it because, like, actually he was in a transition period in his life. And, you know, he said something really articulate about, like, how he wanted to serve people. And, and he told me afterwards that that moment was really key towards getting him to take me seriously as a life partner mm. because like what a man really wants more than anything a masculine man is a woman who sees him as who he's becoming and not just who he is right now and wants to empower him to be who he's becoming in the world because any other you know he can find another woman that he's attracted to he can find another woman to fall in love with, he could find another woman to have sex with. But if you're able to see him for who he wants to be and relate to him as if he already is that and empower him that way, um, then he's going to see you as essential to becoming that. And because that's most important to him, then he'll see the relationship as being more important to him if that makes sense yeah oh my gosh that is so powerful i think everyone should just rewind that like <laughs> last two minutes and watch them over and over yeah all, all the videos i've done on commitment i always try and mention a man needs to know that he can live his purpose with you that you're not going to be like a distraction from his life's purpose and his path but you add to him and he becomes more when the two of you are together um he can live out his purpose even more being with you you know, then, then not with you. I think that's huge. So yeah, thank you for mentioning that. Um, amazing. So let, let's say a man then says, you know, are you dating other men? You know, right, right, right. Like, yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I trust me. I'm going to get to that. Um, I'm just sort of painting the, um, the, the paradigm of like the context in which you ask the question. Yeah. So like on the second date, on the third date, on the fourth date, like it should be fun, of course, but also start asking him questions like, um, you know, you're not going to ask him like, what's your purpose necessarily, but you can say like, so, you know, how, like, what, what is most important to you in life? Or you can ask him even like, you know, on your 80th birthday, what do you want your friends and family to, to toast you for? Or like, what's the one thing that you want to accomplish in life that makes life worth it? Or, also notice like what he is committed to if he's divorced with children for example like how important are it is his role of a father to him and how can you make sure to reflect back to him that he's being a great father and you know not take that role away from him and not you know try to compete with his attention from his time with his kids um, or whatever he's creating in his work like ask him deeper questions about why that's important to him and like what, what impact that's going to have in the world. Um, and you know, like, like how does that relate to his purpose? If that seems like an appropriate question to ask, obviously you have to be in rapport with him, but like that, those questions will set the context for the deeper questions to ask about the relationship. If you ask about the relationship without asking the deeper context about him and his life, 
then he's going to feel like you just want marriage with any guy mm -hmm. and you're trying to push for marriage with any guy. But if first you start talking about um, and being curious about him and what's important to him and like what he wants out of life and then you start speaking about you know the relationship it just fits right into the context you don't seem like you're being pushy you seem like you're just trying to create something with him if that makes sense so like i that's why i think it's important to talk about the context before i talk about the specifics absolutely oh my god and i just i feel like we need to do a whole other interview just on these questions to create a, a deep emotional intimacy it's something i get asked about all the time I did one video on it a long time ago, but it sounds like you have just like, you're just a wealth of these questions to build intimacy and emotional connection. I love that you said all of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Cause like, otherwise it's like commitment is superficial. I mean, you can right. find any guy off the street if you're an attractive woman that like would want to marry you. But I mean, like, is that, you don't want to marry one of those guys. You want to marry somebody right. who you have compatible purposes and you have compatible values and you know, you really like are supporting each other and being who you both want to be in the world and you have this deep sense of emotional intimacy and so it's like that's what you want to be creating first and then within that context then um i actually do recommend that you date other guys uh until you decide to be exclusive with someone and not to decide to be exclusive with somebody before you've determined that you have uh, compatible visions for what you want to create in a relationship in a compatible time frame um, and that you know he has all of the qualities that you've determined that are important to you and that he doesn't have any of these deal breakers and it's gonna take however long it's gonna take to you know discover that like three days four days five days two months whatever um, and if you're if you're um, the kind of woman who can have sex before exclusivity I don't judge that um, but if you need to be exclusive in order to have sex, don't go to his house and don't invite him over to your house until you've agreed, until you have determined that all of these things are in line. And then uh, if he asks you if you're dating other guys, um, I mean, I have two responses to that because it depends on if you want to be exclusive with him or not. And like I said, the only reason to be exclusive is if you have all of these things. In, in common, um, not just because you want to sleep with him or not just because you're attracted to him. Um, because, you know, the more, if you're sleeping with him and you become exclusive with him because of the attraction, but you don't want the same things in the relationship, it's only going to lead to more heartbreak down the line when you do eventually break up. So it's like, what I recommend that you say, if he's like, are you dating other men and you want to be exclusive with him? Um, you know, then you can say something like, um, yes, but it's nothing serious. And then, you know, then he can ask, well, is what we have serious? And then you can say, well, do you want it to be? And, you know, then it's his opportunity to say yes. And then it's your opportunity to say, well, that's wonderful and that's your opportunity to talk about your relationship vision like i want you i want to be with you and only you and you know once he asks you to be exclusive then then you can say that i mean it's important when a man does move the relationship forward to let yourself be emotionally impacted by it if that's what you want like to say oh i am just so excited because i i do have feelings for you and i and i want to be with you and only you and, um, but it's important at this point that you clarify your time frame for exclusivity. Um, so be emotionally impacted, but then it's important for you to share your inspiring vision of love if you haven't talked about it already. Like, um, I am so honored and flattered because I, I want that with you too. And remember we talked about um, that we want to create a, marriage together and or or that we both want marriage um and we both want the kind of marriage where we fall more deeply in love every day or whatever it is that you've um decided that you both want um and i would be comfortable being exclusive with you for let's say a year before we move the relationship forward and that would just be absolutely wonderful for me 
you know? And so at that point you're setting the time frame, and he might protest. <laughs> he might, you know, say, well, what do you mean? You're going to, you're putting a time pressure on me to propose to you in a year. Like, I don't know if that's what I'm going to want. So at that point you could say something like, I totally understand what you're saying. Um, I've just been in long-term relationships that went nowhere. And I think that a year will be enough time for us to both get to know each other and decide if we're the people that we want to get married to and we can make that decision together. And I'm not saying that you have to propose to me in a year. I'm just saying that a year is how long I'm going to feel comfortable dating you exclusively before we go to the next level. Uh, okay. I've never heard anyone put it that way before. I actually love that. I think that's totally brilliant. Of course, every situation is different. So for everyone watching, type in your situation in the comment section. If you have questions about the specific, it's so hard to give specific advice, you know, for like thousands of people, right? That's exactly why with a coach one-on-one. -on -one, if, if you're in a situation where it's a little fuzzy or, you know, not clear, can really help, but I really like that as like a general guideline. Of course, you have to get in touch with how long, you know, it would feel right, good. Right, of course. Right? Yeah. I yeah, your that. timeline, your vision, like, you know, if maybe marriage isn't what you want, maybe you are comfortable being exclusive and having a domestic partnership with somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you're even comfortable having a polyamorous relationship where it's also emotionally committed. And, you know, I don't judge that. And sometimes I guide people in that, but that requires advanced level skills in communication and emotional processing. So yeah, every part, but it's like, Mm -hmm. Whatever people want, they just need to be clear about that and committed to that more than they are to a guy because they have feelings for him. Yeah. But, and I love that just straightforward template that you gave. Like, you know, it feels incredible to, to the thought of it just being the two of us together. And here's what I need. Here's what I see for myself in order to really make that work. I, I love that. What would you say if a woman's been dating a guy for a while, maybe a few months and they haven't had that talk? I know I see it in the comment sections of a lot of my videos. Like, well, he never really brought it up that we're exclusive, but we spend all our time together. So it's kind of assumed. Do you have anything to say? Yeah, 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 I do. I mean, because I think in this day and age, it's always safe to assume that a guy is dating other women mm -hmm. unless he's asked you to be exclusive. I agree. Yeah. If And even if he's not, if he hasn't asked you to be exclusive, he's not serious about you. Because if a, I mean, it depends on if you really want to be with a masculine man. And I know that you talk about masculine feminine energy in, um, you know, in, in, in your other videos, as have we. But a masculine man will generally want you to only be with him. If he's really serious with, about you, he'll say, I want you to be exclusive with me. Absolutely. And if he hasn't said that, then he either is dating other women or he's not taking the relationship with you seriously. Oh yeah. I mean, totally. A masculine guy is going to go, okay, well, I think we should get engaged by January. And then this, so then they'll have it <laughs> in mind. They will, they will, you know, they'll come across with something if they're really serious about you. Absolutely. Like that is just so true. Um, what would you say to a woman where, you know, maybe they are, she already is exclusive. A lot of women come to us or at least me, I know for sure. And they, um, they're already kind of, they don't know about any of these tools and they're, I call it, they're in an exclusivity trap. They have this yeah. boyfriend and they don't know what he wants, but they're exclusive with him and they don't know if they should like get out of it or, or bring it up. So do you have anything for women in that situation? Yeah. I also coach a lot of women in that situation and there are, I mean, it is highly individual because it really does depend on discovering what it is like we said in the beginning that she's committed to creating, but then also getting really curious about what he's committed to creating, you know? So I think that's about taking a step back and asking those questions that you didn't ask in the beginning, you know, to really clarify um, not just what kind of relationship he wants, but what does he want his life to be about? And, you know, like what is he committed to and how can you support him in being who he most wants to be in the world and are you committed to being who you most want to be in the world and engaging those questions first because that'll usually like jog a man out of his sense of complacency if you start talking about commitment in other areas of life but then 
once you do and you're really in action towards the kind of goals and dreams that you're going towards, then I think it's important to start um, having that same kind of conversation about um, inspiring a man with your vision for what you want to create in a relationship and asking if he wants to create that with you. And, you know, if he sort of hems and haws, then I think it is important to give him a timeline. Um, and the timeline can be whatever. It, it's very highly individual. You right. know, it's very, very hard, especially if you're in a relationship with a man already and you're having sex with him or even living with him and, you know, you're emotionally invested. It's going to be really hard for both of you if you break up. Um, and so it's a very highly individual process, but it really does have to do with communicating your vision in a very inspiring way. Um, so I'll talk about a client I worked with, uh, cause she's the most, um, interesting example where she was really emotionally invested in a guy and then they had a long distance relationship and he was also dating another woman and she, but they'd been dating for a couple of years and she was really in love with him. And so she contacted me cause she was like, you know, I've talked about monogamy and he doesn't want monogamy. So I'm going to have to break up with him. And you know, that would be really painful. And so I was like, you've talked about monogamy, but have you talked about your vision of what you want to create with him and what kind of life you want to have together and what that means to you? And like, paint the picture for him. What would it be like for him to wake up with you in the morning? And like, what would it be like for you to go through the day together? And you know, what would that look like and feel like and how would that inspire him? And so she was like, Oh no, I haven't talked to him about that because it's too vulnerable. And so we had a session where I got her in touch with her vulnerability in a really like playful, inspiring way. And we role played the conversation so that you know, whatever it was that he said to resist, we talked about how she could then get curious and um, listen to what he needed in order to want to create this with her. Or if he had resistance, like get underneath it and figure out like, is that something that is permanent or is there something he needs to work through first to really get clear about where he's at with it. So I coached her through that conversation and did role plays with her. And then she had it with him. And it turned out that he was so inspired by that vision um, that he was able to tell her exactly what he needed to end the relationship with the other woman and then uh, move her across the country to be with him. And, you know, he started a plan to be able to do that. Wow. And wow. That's just that's such a powerful example of how you change your perspective and how you're going about it because it isn't always so black and white, right? I, I love that. That is fantastic. Is there like a specific, let's say, you know, a woman is going to have to like break the exclusivity with the guy and start dating other men and maybe still date him, maybe not. It, can you give like a, a template for something like that? Because I know there's so many women probably watching this too who are in that situation. They're exclusive with a man and they don't get the sense that he really wants the kind of commitment that they do. Yeah. And so uh, the situation is that sh they already have been monogamous for a while, but mm -hmm. she senses he doesn't want the relationship sh that she does. Right. And um, yeah, I mean, that is really tough. Um, and I do think that's a really highly individual situation. So I do coach women in that situation to do different things. Um, but I do think it starts out like that example with talking to him in an inspiring way about what it is that you want to create and then giving him a timeline to decide if that's what he wants with her. And, and if you don't want to break up with him, then you can say, you know, I'm willing to be exclusive with you for another six months while you figure it out, mm -hmm. you know, for example. Um, and then I'm not going to necessarily break up with you, but I will start dating other people. Um, I think that, and, but you need to decide if you can do that because a lot of women can't be with one man and be sleeping with him and then be dating other people. Um, and so sometimes I'll coach women to give it a clean break to say, um, you know, if we haven't decided to move the relationship to the next level in six months, then, um, I'm going to have to, you know, I, I, I love you. I, it's really important. Um, if you're going to set a timeline or, or enforce a timeline to first of all, speak about how 
how much, how, what your feelings are for him. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I love you. I want to be with you. You are the most important person in, in my life. I feel deep, more deeply connected to you than I ever have with anyone. Like, I would feel so heartbroken if I had to leave. Um, and it's, I'm just really committed to being a mother or whatever it is that you want. Um, and so I would be more sad being with you in the long term if that never happened. And so as heartbreaking as it would be, I'm going to have to leave, you know, in six months if, if we decide not to take it to the next level. Um, and then, you know, if you do decide to leave, I think it's important to give him one last chance to like really have another inspiring conversation with him. But if you say you're going to leave, it's important to do it because otherwise he's never going to respect your boundaries. Yeah. Oh yeah. I know a lot of women who kind of keep having endless conversations like that and the man can feel it like, okay, she might get upset for a little while, but she's not going to leave me. I know couples who have just endless conversations about commitment and all of this stuff, but the man knows deep down, there's no way she's ever going to leave. She's too invested. So Mm -hmm. there's no, he's not really inspired to change. So yeah, thank you for that. Great, great template. I know we are uh, running out of time. This was really valuable. We might need to do a part two interview Mm -hmm. on this because I know everyone's going to have a lot of questions, but I'd love to hear any like last words of wisdom or tips, tools, anything else you'd like to share about inspiring a man's commitment. Definitely. Um, I mean, one last thing I want to say about what I just said, which is that if you do leave, and I mean, like I said, it's a highly individual situation. So I do recommend talking about it with a coach if you're going to do that. Um, But it's important to have no contact because what happens with a man when he actually, like if you're talking, if you leave and you talk on the phone every day, like he'll never get a chance to see what his life would be like without you. And there's something about masculine men where like it's sad that men fall in love when they're away from you (laughs) because masculine men have such um, intense single focus that the way a man knows that he's in love is if he, if he thinks about you throughout the day, if he can't stop thinking about you when you're not reaching out to him, then he knows that he's meant to be with you. If that makes sense. So it's like important if you leave to have no contact for up to two months and Um, if after two months he doesn't like come begging back to you and saying, okay, I will get married or whatever, then you probably lost him. But I, I've just found that it takes up to two months. But I, like I said, in that kind of situation, I really do recommend working with some kind of coach or therapist or healing professional, because it is an extremely heartbreaking situation to go through. And I don't wish that on anyone. Because, you know, like emotionally, physically separating from the man that you're in love with is, is very heartbreaking. And that's why I think it's important to clarify from the beginning, if a man, you know, what kind of character he has and uh, what his beliefs are about love and, you know, how he relates to other things that he's committed to um, and have those deeper questions and clarify a timeline before you become exclusive. Um, you know, because that prevents heartbreak further on. Then you don't get as deeply emotionally invested before you know that, that he is. I, I totally agree. Yeah, I always say it's different. You know, we women tend to fall in love and want to and commit and we feel connected when we're with a man and we're talking and he's touching us and looking in our eyes and we're feeling all these things. And men tend to fall in love or realize that they, that they miss us or that we're the one when they're away from us. Just like you said, because they're single focused when they're missing us. So yeah, I love what you said that if you actually decide to do this, don't continue to call him every day or he shouldn't have this 24 seven access to you over text because then he doesn't really get the feeling of what life would be like without you. I really love that. Yeah. So, and again, nothing we say is really black or white. It's hard. Oh, to definitely. That, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's hard to give any cookie cutter advice. It's true. Um, and I also recommend like, until you find a man that you want to commit to, like a lot of women will be monogamous just because they're having sex with a guy and they want, you know, they don't want to sleep around, but that's not a good reason to be monogamous. And so I recommend dating multiple men, even if you're only sleeping with one, um, you don't have to sleep with the other man, but until he asks you for exclusivity, date other men, because 
you want the one who wants to move the relationship forward to pursue you and, you know, become exclusive with the one who shows up with all the qualities that you're looking for that you also have chemistry with. And you might have to date multiple men before that guy shows up instead of being attached to the one that you think it is in the beginning. Because we do tend to get um, carried away with our fantasies about, you know, marriage and family and, and the yeah. lifestyle we want to have with a particular guy rather than paying attention to which guy that we're dating is actually showing up and wanting to commit to us. And of course, we have to choose one that we're also attracted to. But yeah. if we do keep dating other men, then eventually we'll discover that there's a mutual um, chemistry and desire with one of them. I totally agree with that. It, it prevents that, like I call it the laser focus on that one guy, which just feels like pressure to him, right? So I totally agree. I do think we should maybe do a part two of this topic mm -hmm. where we answer questions. If, you, if you're if you interested in that. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Great. Yeah, so everyone type in your questions, your situations. I know we did that on our first, uh, one of our other interviews, then we answered those questions in the next one. Everyone oh, yeah, well. let's keep going. Yeah. I love interacting yeah. with people and their specific examples. Yeah. And everyone, oh my gosh, everyone's always like, bring Valerie back again soon. <laughs> no, I know, I know everyone's going to have so many questions for you. I can already like see it in my mind. Um, what, let's talk about your free gift and your podcast, oh, yeah. anything that you'd like to share. Thank I'll you. post links to everything in the description too. Yeah. Um, it's my honor. So I talked at the beginning about clarifying your important values and, you know, what's the most important to you to create in life and how that is the most important thing, um, you know, for you to ask yourself so that you meet a guy who wants to support you in that. And so I do have a free ebook that's called the magnetic dating formula, where I give an exercise on how to determine your values and find guys that, you know, where to meet men who want to support that. And then also how to create a deep connection on a date and um, how to create this romantic tension in the beginning that makes him want to keep moving the relationship forward. So that's called the magnetic dating formula. And uh, the link for that is coachvaleriegreen.com forward slash single. So I'll have the, the link to that b below the video, which you'll post. Um, and yes, my podcast is launching on September 17th. 2018, whenever you're watching this video. Um, it's called Soul Shaking Love. And um, so we can post the link to that on iTunes uh, below this video as well. And uh, it's on iTunes and Google Play and Stitcher. And of course, on my website, which is coachvaleriegreen.com forward slash podcast. So amazing yeah and i was on uh one of the episodes podcast yes it was one of the most in-depth interviews i've ever done so everyone please check that out i'd love to hear your thoughts on that so thank you so much and this was great i feel like we should definitely talk some more about this topic and the yeah. questions and all like so every time we do this more things come up of, of what we can share with everyone so thank you so much again and i will hopefully talk with you soon yay <laughs>